Hello everyone, it's Rose Fatal and welcome to the second half of this two-part series. If you haven't watched the first half, the link will be in the description box below. Let's recap where we stopped. The British Board of Films Classification, BBFC. They are responsible for the ratings that you see on films, series, video games, and any sort of video work released on a physical medium in the UK. The BBFC outlawed anyone in the UK from creating or selling material that depicted face eating as well as female ejaculation. However, pornography depicting male ejaculation is still permissible in the UK. In 2014, the law was expanded to include online sites that hosted such adult materials. In response to the aforementioned 2014 legislation, hundreds of people gathered in Westminster, London to take part in what was called the face sitting protest. Miles Jackman, a lawyer who specializes in obscenity law, stated in his blog regarding the 2014 ruling, Pornography is the canary in the coal mine of free speech. It is the first freedom to die. If this assault on liberty is allowed to go unchallenged, other freedoms will fall as a consequence. More recently, the Digital Economy Act 2017 introduced new measures designed to protect children by preventing people under 18 from being able to access adult content online. Under this system, the BBFC can force all British internet service providers to blanket ban all adult sites that fail to properly adopt extensive cross-checked age verification methods. This may include verifying their age either through SMS, credit card, passport or a driving license in order to gain access to adult sites. However, the most likely method that would be put in place is HID, a system created by MindGeek. They have the monopoly over more than 20 adult tube sites including Pornhub, RedTube and YouPorn. Meanwhile, the adult sites who failed to comply with these strict measures would be fined up to £250,000. Privacy issues were raised in regards to this topic. Critics have pointed out that MindGeek has had some major breaches of users' personal data. Jim Killock, the executive director of the UK's Open Rights Group, told The Verge that it puts too much power in the hands of companies and if teenagers in particular have any incentive to get around these controls, they will. Critics have pointed out that there are many ways to circumvent such a system. The most obvious would be the use of VPNs, which can be legally purchased by those who are under 18. All this was reiterated by Anna Richards during a Sky News report on the UK's potential porn ban. Anna Richards is one of the most prolific female producers of online adult films. She founded FrolicMe.com, an adult site for women and couples to enjoy tasteful, erotic, sex-positive content. Sorry for the poor quality of this video, I wasn't able to find a better version of the footage online. If a, a teenage boy, for example, wants to see and wants to access pornography, they are going to find a way. And is there a concern that by having these age verification checks, uh, it will push children to illegal sites in order to access what they want to see? Let's bring in Anna Richards on this. And the point I'm making is that protecting children should be the absolute priority. Anybody with a VPN can actually disguise their location, that being in the UK, and can actually then access anything online, avoiding any of these porn blocks. The regulators that are being asked to come in by the government to actually take our information, these are unknown regulators. Various people, various companies that are coming from from, you know, they're deciding that it would be something they can actually offer, but they are going to be unregulated, unpoliced, there's going to be no government assurances as to how that data is going to be held, looked after, and indeed, where could it be used in future? Personal data, you know, this is our key identity data that we're being asked for. These are passports, these are driving licenses. We shouldn't be having to, to actually release that. 
And one of the even more frightening facts is that one of these particular regulators is actually um, a company behind it is called MindGeek. MindGeek are actually the largest private company with the largest share of graphic, unrealistic, hardcore porn that's out there. They actually own Pornhub and they own RedTube. These are the tube sites which are what we're then being concerned about and really where we need to protect our children from viewing. And yet they're going to be one of the regulators? Yeah. And Atkins, the government, as we're hearing, isn't behind the, the, the checks, isn't conducting the checks, leaving it up to the industry itself. As we heard from Anna, that raises questions about whether we can rely on them. But do porn consumers in the UK care about such censorship? A recent survey was conducted by YouGov for UK's Digital Economy Act 2017. The results showed that 76% of Britons were not aware about the legislation. Meanwhile, most who fully comprehend what the legislation is about did not believe that it would be effective. Many even doubted that the legislation is intended to protect younger minds from adult content, but rather about the government trying to implement widespread censorship and control. What do you think about the UK's approach to handling the public's access to adult material? Do you think they are right to ban certain points such as female ejaculation? Are you concerned about the Digital Economy Act 2017? Would you be comfortable providing your ID and bank details in order to access adult material? Do you believe all this is a form of censorship? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video to be informative, please give it a like and if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and ding the bell for notifications for future content. It's been Fatally Honest, ciao!